Good evening. I want to welcome you here to Glory to God Ministry Church Pavilion, 4000 West Fairfield Drive, in Pensacola, Florida. My name is Richard Curl, and my gift is Apostle. Ministry has been a part of my life for 35 years. So I want to stand before you as I actually stand nervously standing, talking about the things of God to a people. As I feel the presence of God, when I use the term nervous because there's a reverence for what is right, to stand and to be clear about what I say and what I make this proclamation to be. And last time I came to you, I came to you um, this past Sunday, and I said not to pray for the coronavirus not to pray for the virus, but to repent. Repentance is having a change of heart, change of behavior, change of direction, and lifestyle. When we repent, then God can begin to heal, deliver, set free, and liberate from the power that corona has at this time. I did say that I believe that this virus is not from man. It is not from the devil. It is from God. God who is my father. And I pray that he's your father. And for those who are not in Christ that are also viewing this, I pray that you know that God wants to become your father. In this time of uncertainty, the economy is rocking and falling and stock market, our social status as we have known it, uh, our football games, basketball games, and all the things that the world has done, everybody is on shutdown. And at this very moment, there's not a man in the world that has an answer to our problem. There's not a human being that has a vaccine that he has created that solves the problem of the coronavirus. And the virus can only do one thing. It can only destroy the body. But there's a great reverence of fear for this virus that can only destroy the body. And I said that there's something worse than the virus of corona, which is sin. And so I want you to understand, and I ask that you go with me and pay attention. Please follow me as I share with you in the word. I want to say this to everyone, as I say to Glory to God Ministry all the time. We grew up in church being gullible. We grew up in churches believing what the preachers say, what people told us. And we wouldn't go home and study. But I want to say this to you is do not believe me, but examine what I say. Study what I say to see is it so. When the church first started in the New Testament, they examined the teaching of the apostle to see was it so. Because I only want you to follow me as I follow Christ. So it's about your growth, your development in Christ. And tonight I want to further discuss part two. Because I said, do not pray, do not entreat God, do not ask God to stop the virus, but repent. And if we repent, then God will stop the virus. So we humble ourselves and we pray concerning our sins and our transgressions and our abominations. So if you read Leviticus 26, 14, you're going to see that God was bringing the plagues. You read Exodus. Chapter 7 through chapter 12, you will see God was bringing the plagues. Plagues has always been around. It's some type of a judgment that God brings against the human race. So tonight, as we look at scriptures that I want you to see so you can understand clearly what I say when I say, do not pray for the virus. Do not entreat God. Do not beg God to stop the virus. Entreat God with repentance. Ask God, our Father, church, ask God to forgive us of our sins, our transgressions. 
and presumptuous sin. So, tonight, let us look in the Word of God. I want us to go into, back to the book of Ezekiel chapter 7. In Ezekiel chapter 7, we're going to start back at verse 5, and we're going to go from there to other verses. It says, Thus says the Lord God, an evil and only evil, behold, is come. Something disastrous has come. Something very wicked has come. Something very monstrous has come. Come means to invade. It has invaded the four corners of the earth. He says, an end is come. An end, not the end. An end is come. The end is come. It watches for thee. Behold, it come. It came in the morning and is looking for thee. There's a thee. There's a you. There's a me that is looking for. He says, see, it come. We all can see that it is here. He said, the morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come. The days of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Yes, I'm repeating myself. I'm being redundant because I want to connect the pieces together. The morning is come unto thee, the four corners of this world. O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come. The day of trouble is near. The day of affliction is near. And not the sounding again of the mountains. It's not the sound of a basketball game. This is not the sound of the football game. This is not the sound of the party. All the doors are closed everywhere. The soccer team shut down. Basketball shut down. Everything that man would normally go out and enjoy, we would call that the mountain of good times. We was in our high places. This is not that day, but this is a day where evil has come. He said, now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and I accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy way, and I will recompense thee for all thy abominations. Abomination, again, have to do with that which is disgusting, that which is wrong. Things that we've done, things that we've behaved, our lifestyle, that which we have masqueraded openly, the disgrace of many things that we have done. We are now mixing, as I said, men are marrying men. Women are marrying women. It is legal. It's a law. In our country, you can do this. We also finding ourselves legally in 18 states, I believe, dealing with zoophilia. All of this have to do with abomination. Also, fornication. Sexual morality between people who is not married, refuse to get married. This is called fornication, uncleanliness. So the behavior, again, has come to a place where God has to make a decision about the behavior of the human race. Also, I want to name pedophiles, pedophilia, those who prey upon children in certain countries where it was allowed, certain countries where parents sold their children. So all of the sin, every sin that's known to man, it is a disgrace. It is something called wickedness. So all these atrocities as we masquerade and behave in such monstrous behavior, then God have now decided to let the evil come. So when I said for us not to pray for the coronavirus, but to repent, Again, the word repent have to do with God is calling throughout the entire world, as he's always called. God have always summons man to a place of repentance, that he would come in and surrender unconditionally. He would surrender to God, the sovereign ruler. He would come in with a change of heart, change of mind, change of conduct, and change of direction. He would make, actually, what we consider 
uh, a 180. He will take a turn, a 180, not a 360. He's going to turn from one direction to another direction. So we're going to turn away from sin, and we're going to turn back to God. This is the way we become delivered. I'm going to use for an example so you can see as the Bible is fulfilling itself. In tonight, in Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 9, my eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways, and thine abomination that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smite thee. So I'm establishing again, the coronavirus is here because God has sent it. It's a plague. It is a pestilence. It is an infectious disease sent throughout every continent, throughout the world, because it's not an American issue. It's not a European issue. It's a human issue throughout the world. God is the ruler of the universe. So to know that God created everything for his own pleasure. And now man has a will. We have our own desires and God respects what you want. If you want what you want, you can have what you want, but God is a God that would judge. So I pray that we will humble our hearts in our minds and return back to God. Now I want to use doctrine so we can understand repentance. In Matthew Gospel, you would go with me there, Matthew chapter 3. This is where you hear the word repentance. Matthew Chapter 3. In verse 1, it says, In the days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, announcing, uttering, Repent ye. Repent ye, you world, repent. This is where I bring in do not pray for the virus. Pray to God about your sin. If my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. I will heal their disease. I will hear from heaven. So God is ready to move if you're ready to turn, if we're ready to turn from our ways. God can Turn it around. God can stop it if we repent. So when John started to preach, he knew in order for the Lord to come to the lives of the people to help them and to bring salvation and to deliver them, that the world had to repent. And it is a summons that God has summoned the whole world to repent, turn away from our sin. We live in a time where everybody's saying, God understands. I'm human. God made me like this. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to say to you, God did not make us like this. When God created man, he created him good and very good. But what man did, man sinned against God. And when man sinned against God, man died in trespasses and sin. And that man and that woman became separated from God. Now they are dead in trespasses and sin. So, Christ come on the scene to quicken us and make us alive and bring us back to God through by the power of salvation. So therefore, repentance is a part of the healing. If you want to be delivered, you want to, if we want to be set free, then it's, it's simple. Repent. Turn away from the lifestyle, the practice of sin. God do not understand your sin because he made a way that you could be healed, that I could be healed. I too walked in sin. The day that I repented, I turned away and I had to forget those things that which were behind me, my old life, and I pursue my new life. So I encourage you when you repent, it's about turn away from your old lifestyle of sin. 
and forget that lifestyle of you in the flesh and pursue your life in Christ in your future. God has a plan. There's a beaten path that Jesus called the way, the truth, and the life. It's a beaten path that leads us all the way home into eternity. Now, the point I want to make is that you do take notice that the kingdom of God is calling for us to repent. I'm here to aid you and to assist you. John said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's rule of righteousness is here. God's peace is here. And his joy is here. That's why none of us who are in Christ should actually be afraid at this time. Because the kingdom of God is within you. The rule and reign of almighty God that brings us peace, joy, that God is my greatest happiness, righteousness, the righteousness of Christ Jesus. So when you repent, you become dressed in what God approves. So if you don't repent, if we don't repent, then sin has the right to bring forth what we see. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death. The wages, what you're going to get paid is death. Your compensation is going to be death. Your reward is going to be death, sorrow, sadness, and misery. Say it again. It's going to be death, sadness, sorrow, and misery because we're walking in darkness. When we see, when I turn the TV on, it's, 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 you name it, it's there. You name it, it's there. Homosexuality is there. And I'm going to say this because I don't want you to think that I'm homophobic because I'm not. I want you to understand that we have all sinned and come short. We all had our vices. We all had our wrong. We all had the things that we did that was an abomination. It was monstrous. My lifestyle was monstrous. So I understand sin. I understand the grace of God. It is not a stupid grace. It's amazing, but it's certainly not a stupid grace. Grace, Paul said, should we continue in sin? Should we go on sinning that grace may abound? Did he give the answer? He said, God forbid. No, we are not to go on sinning and say, grace, cover that. I want to share with you now. The next chapter is in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Let's go there with me. In the Apostles' writing, chapter 7. Again, I don't write sermons. I unveil them. The mystery of the kingdom is given to us so we may come in and make the proclamation of God's word by rightly dividing the word of truth. It's not about stirring you and your emotions, but it's about giving you the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And Paul is now talking to the Corinthian people in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Now, I'm giving out passages of scriptures because I want you to go read and study what I'm sharing with you because we have the power to make changes, especially the church, because we are the salt of the earth, we are the light of the world. But church, if we should ever lose our salt, we are good for nothing. We the ones should be able to make a difference through your prayers, through your being here, you're most valuable, you bring worth to the world. If you should take the church out of the world, then the value of what God sees has no value. Second Corinthians, Paul says in chapter 7, I'm going to start at verse 8. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent. Though I did repent, I had a change of mind. I perceive that the same epistle has made you sorry, though it was but for a season. Now I rejoice not that you was made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. That you sorrow to repentance. You had a change of mind. You sorry. You, was, you felt bad about it. You regretted what you did. That you had a change of heart and a change of mind. He says you sorrow to changing. It's not enough to confess our sin. We have to repent. He says, but that you sorrow to repentance. 
for ye were made sorrow after a godly manner. This is a God sorrow that ye might receive the damage by us in nothing. We don't have to come in and deal with you in no way because you corrected yourself. You told on yourself. You were sorry about what you did. And notice what he says in verse 10. He said, for godly sorrow worketh repentance. You and I can't go on living in sin and telling God he understands. God has a judgment. God has a wrath. God has indignation. God has long suffering. God has mercy. God has love and God has judgment. Now we're experiencing another side of God because he said the time has come. It's an end to me tolerating your infidelity. It's an end to me tolerating your homosexuality. It's an end to me tolerating church, playing church. It's an end. My, I've come to an end for this generation. Now what we're going to see is that God's judgment is trying to make some changes or making changes in the earth realm. And I want to say this as well. Judgment start with the church. If it start with us, it says, where shall the ungodly appear? So church, God has to first deal with us, and he's dealing with us. And I pray that every one of us awaken from that which is wicked, insidious, ungodly, in behavior and lifestyle. We're compromising. We're going along to get along. We use his houses for money, merchandising the people. We use it for entertaining, letting people think we can live any kind of way, and we certainly cannot do that. So God's going to hold us all accountable. So tonight, notice, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. When you're sorry to God about what have you done, he will bring in a deliverance. He will bring in liberation power, that thing, that vice that used to have you. Then he will deliver you from that vice. I can testify because my vice was so strong. I wondered, could God deliver me? But I can assure you, the power of salvation is real if you repent. So he heals us and he delivers us through his power of salvation. Notice he says, he says, repentance to salvation not to be repented of, not to be sorrow or regret that I turned from that which was inappropriate. I have no sorrow for turning away from my own sexual immorality. I have no sorrow for turning away from my lying, my jealousy, the strife of my heart, evil concupiscence, all the works of my flesh. I have no regret for having godly sorrow. So therefore, the healing have taken place in my heart and in my soul and in my mind as a new creature. So if we repent, God will heal us, then he'll heal the land. Why should he heal the land and not heal us? Why should he liberate the coronavirus and I'm not liberated from the powers and influence of darkness that offends him? So please, I beg you and I ask that you listen. Go back and study. Don't believe me. Pick up your Bible and begin to read and study it. Study to show yourself approved unto God. He says, but the sorrow of the world work is death. Let me explain that to you. I'm sorry I got caught. I'm sorry my wife caught me. I'm sorry my husband caught me. I'm sorry the police caught me. But there's no godly sorrow. Godly sorrow work is changes that the heart and soul of an individual turns back to its creator. And this coronavirus is not about destroying man to the utmost. It's about getting everyone's attention so we can turn back to God in an acceptable time, a time he'll be pleased to hear from us, a time that he'll hear your cry, a time that he will open to you. You can come in and sup with him, and he will certainly talk with you. Not beat you down because you're a homosexual. Not beat you down because you're a liar. Not beat you down because you're an adulterer. Not beat you, beat you down because you're a pedophile. He will open his heart and bring you into his heart, into his place, to make you a new creature in Christ Jesus. So please take the doctrine here and note that this godless sorrow will actually bring about changes. Verse 11 says, Behold, this self-same thing that ye sorrow after a godless sort. 
What carefulness is wrought in you? Yea, what clearing of yourself? Yea, what indignation? Yea, what fear? Yea, what vehement desires? Yea, what zeal? Yea, what revenge? In all things you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. Simply said, when you repent, when you turn away from, you are clearing yourself from the coronavirus. So what wrath, what indignation is upon your life? There's none. What fear, what is to be afraid of? There's nothing to be afraid of because you have repented. So God has afforded you his unmerited favor to come into your life and bring you into a place that he will drop the charges. I'm going to say this again because Paul is making it clear. When you and I repent with godly sorrow, godly sorrow, sorry to you, Father. I'm sorry to you, Father. I'm sorry to you, God. You saw me. Nobody saw me. You saw me. You know what I did. And I ask that you forgive me. Notice he says, what vehement desires? Yea, what zeal? Yea, what revenge? There is no, there's no judgment on you now. There's, there's no wrath of God. There's no punishment. There is nothing that God is going to pronounce against you if you turn. What zeal? Yea, what revenge? And all things you have approved yourself to be clear in this matter. So this is simple. Confess, repent, and watch God drop the charges. Watch the atonement come in. Watch the forgiveness come in. Watch how he begin to heal our land. Heal your home. Heal your marriage. Heal our jobs. Heal our economy. Heal our world. If we repent and turn from those abominations. Those abominations. Now, that's the New Testament and the apostles' writing. Please take notice. Go back and look at repentance. This is why I said, don't pray for the coronavirus. I know quite sure somebody said, what is he talking about? What do you mean don't pray for the virus? The virus is here because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Now, when we transgress, we always want to come back and acknowledge, I've transgressed. I did wrong knowing what's right. I, I did it. Father, forgive me. And I'm going to use David for an example. David did wrong. When David did wrong in Psalm 51, David, after Nathan confronted him, you notice Nathan had to go to him because David wanted to walk on like God understands. David went on living as though God don't care about what I did with Bathsheba. He doesn't care about what I did to Uriah. Oh, he cares. So God had a judgment for David. David humbled himself and repented. He says, against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, in your presence. I did it, Lord. So when you and I acknowledge I'm guilty, godly sorrow work is repentance. And it's sad when God looks at me and says, I will not spare you. My eye, my mind see you, but I will not pity you. That's a sad day. Please hear me. Every soul that can hear what I'm saying, play, play, church is over. Merchandising the people, preachers, stop it. Please, this is not where we come to become famous. This is not our entertainment hall. This is a dressing room. This is where people come to learn of him, grow and develop, and become a perfect man in Christ Jesus. Yes, I'm going to say it again. These houses are set up like hospitals. These are some of the greatest emergency rooms. These are some of the greatest ICUs and intensive care where souls can come in here sick. But we have turned it into the wrong thing. So I warn everyone who's playing church, stop it, please. This is a sad day, and I find a lot of Christians are afraid. They're now jumping on every wind and every doctrine. 
5G is out here. You have more Christians who believe that 5G is the big monster. No, sin is the big monster that have called what is come up on the earth to happen. Now, I do acknowledge anytime man makes something, it's going to affect in some kind of way. I won't chase that, but it's a lot of that going on. I'm asking everyone to get your Bible and let's find out what God is saying because he helped the final say so. I want to show you another one because it says repentance. It's about learning about repentance. This is part two. There's an abomination. There's a disgrace. There's dishonor. There's things that we're doing that's not right. It's ungodly. It's such a shame. We masquerade like it's okay. But I wanted you to know that God's judgment is in the earth for this generation. This is not the first generation he's dealt with. This is not the first generation that Almighty God has dealt with. If you go back to Genesis chapter 6, go there with me because that generation did what they wanted to do, and there is no godly sorrow. Nor is the preacher at that time. Nor is the man that's bringing a proclamation, asking the people to repent. But man hardens his heart, so God takes a look. So we notice. The Bible tells us it's in Genesis chapter 6, in verse 5. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in earth. It was monstrous. It was shockingness in the earth. Man is masquerading doing what man want to do. He says that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. In our communities, murdering and shooting and killing, drugs, you name it, is going on. Injustice, still going on. So man does what he want to do from his own argument, from his own conversation, from his own imagination. But I want to encourage you that God that we serve, he don't slumber and he don't sleep. He don't take a nap and he's not on a far journey. He's letting us know now the end has come, not the end of the world. Hear me good. The end of the world is not come, but the end that God cup is full. The end where God says, my long suffering is over. I now must begin to execute my wrath, my indignation, and my judgment. But remember what I read to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 7. There's no fear that should be in you. There's no revenge that you're worried about because you repented with a godly sorrow. And not regretting from turning away from my behavior. Turning away from my lifestyle, turning away from my practice. Whoever we are, from the church house, from my house, to your house, wherever we are, it's time to repent. And preacher, stop telling people God understands. Grace will take care of it. Grace is not taking care of this. Grace is not taking care of the things that I see happening. Grace is not foolish. Notice, so when God saw this, man continued to go on doing what man do. It said, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. It brought a sorrow and said it grieved him in his heart. It brought a sorrow because of the behavior was so hideous and indignant because of what man is doing out of his own desire, that it grieved God that he had ever created mankind. The next verse says, the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping things and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made man. There's a regret. God has a regret now for making the man that he made, because now the man lives to his own interests. He lived to his own will, his own desire. He lived for his own trust. He lived with self-love. He lived with self-assertion. He lived to obey himself. He's committed to himself. 
He disregards God. It's not about what God will. It's about what I will. So now, this is what's going on in the first world. The Bible says, I'm going to go down to verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked up on the earth, and he, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupt his ways up on the earth. Everybody was doing what everybody wanted to do. Self-love, self-interest, all of my ambitions, all of what my wake up in the morning is all about is about me, myself, and I. There's no love for God. There's no interest for God. There's no concern for God. I'm going to say it again. There's no love for God at this time. There's no interest for God in his word at this time. Let me help my house. Let me help my car. Let me help my career. Let me help my education. Let me help my retirement. Let me help my 401k. And now everything is affected because God says it has come to an end for this generation. Not the end of the world. It is not the end of the world. It's the end of God tolerating what man is masquerading. It's the end where God says, I'm full of it and I'm going to deal with it my way, my timing. But I love the fact that mercy is still pleading in this case. But in Noah's day, his days, he said, my spirit would not always strive with man, and his days shall be 120. So now, notice that man has corrupted himself. Man has defiled himself. So therefore, man is sleeping with men, as we're doing today. Women are sleeping with women, as we're doing today. Children are disobedient to parents, as it is today. Parents is killing children. Killing, killing pants, as it was then, so is it now. So God has always had a wrath and indignation when man's sin comes before him. 13 is the piece. And God said unto Noah, listen, God communicated to Noah, and this is what he said. The end of all flesh is come before me. I'm not going to tolerate it another day. It's over. It's become before me. So in Ezekiel, when you talk about the end is come, the end is come unto thee. That means that there's a day that came that God say, it's over. My patience, my long suffering for you, for this generation. Keep in mind, this is not the end of the world. But it does mark something. It does mark the beginning of sorrow. So brothers and sisters, those who can hear, humble ourselves and pray. Humble ourselves and repent. Humble ourselves and say, Lord, forgive me. Make straight the way of the Lord. Lord, come into my life. I am a sinner. Come into my mind. Give me a right spirit. Lord, help me. Cry out now because this is called the acceptable year of the Lord. This is a time that I'm pleased to hear from you. I don't care what you've done. If you cry, I'll answer at this time. So notice that God is saying, Nor the end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now, I went there because the end had come. Not for Noah. No. It wasn't the end for Noah. It was the end for all the flesh of the human who walked in their flesh, in their human nature, doing what they wanted to do. Then God says, I'm going to deal with them. Now notice, God's going to bring a plague of flood, of water, of death up on the earth. Means that God's going to destroy it. He's going to destroy mankind that is monstrous in his lifestyle. He's corrupt his ways. He loved himself. God says, end is here. But it's not the end of the world. So don't call it the end of the world. It call it the end that man life would end. Man life would end as they know it. But Noah life would go on. Him and his seven family members would be on that boat and that flood is going to hit. It's going to be monstrous. Why so monstrous, God? Because man's sin is monstrous. Man's sin is shocking. So therefore, the noise and thundering and the lightning and the floods that they got that day 
They've never heard it before. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. The boundaries of the earth, of the oceans, Atlantic Ocean, we would say the Gulf of Mexico, the Pacific Ocean, all the oceans in the world broke their boundaries and came up and covered the mountains along with 40 days of flooding. I said that because when there's no repentance and there's no godly sorrow, there has to be a judgment. When you're not sorry for your sin, God's going to chasten us. And I'm going to say this to the church. Church, he says, whom I love, I chasten. And I want to thank God, my father, for chasing me, correcting me, getting hold to me, letting me know this is inappropriate. This is unbecoming. This is not how I want you to live. Make straight paths for your feet. And I humbled myself to this very day. So when I say I stand nervous, I stand nervous because I respect what the words say. And I want to make sure I'm saying what he say and not what I want to say. And I'm not here to be some glamour person. I'm not here trying to be famous. I really don't want to be doing this on this level. But God has caused it to be so. So I'm gladly joined in saying what he would have me to say. Now I want to give us another piece to make it clear because when God come in and he began to make changes, for those of us who not, will not repent after a godly sort, this is what's going to begin to happen now. So what's happening here? Let's go to the gospel because I want to show you what the gospel says in Matthew chapter 24. 24th chapter of Matthew. Matthew chapter 24. It's going to be important because what's happening is what's being fulfilled as I'm speaking to you. Matthew 24. We're going to come down to verse 34. We're going to read 34 through 41. Now, now notice in the days, days of Noah, Noah's, Noah's going to get on the boat. Nor is going to be left, but somebody's going to be taken. Okay? So when this judgment hit here in the earth realm, some of us going to be left, and some of us going to be taken. And I was watching the news the other day, and this guy, who's married to another guy, he said his husband died. It reminded me of the prophecy. One going to be left, one going to be taken. As it was in the day of Noah, Noah was left, the world was taken, but it was not the end of the world. So here in this piece, pay attention. In verse 34, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. It shall not pass as a generation. Every generation that ever hear God's word, God has always dealt with every generation that God's word would be fulfilled. So in Noah's generation, that generation didn't pass away until God's preaching had been fulfilled. The children of Israel, God's word had to be fulfilled. Now, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and hour, no man know not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, divorcing, Everybody doing what they want to do until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Everybody was doing themselves, self-lovers, self-interest. They trusted themselves. They leaned. They propped themselves on their own understanding. Church, I want to call you back to studying your Bible. We use a term here at Glory to God Ministry. Do not be church dumb. Let me say it again. Do not be church dumb. Dumb as an acronym means to D, didn't, you, use, 
my Bible. It's time to pick your Bible. It's time to stop letting men entertain you. You're going to need a hiding place and a secret place. You're going to need God. You're going to need God to know you and you know him. Now, the reason the people that's left outside of the ark, God don't know them. They never turned. They never repented and turned towards God. That's why I said we first turn to God. God will deal with Corona. But at this time, if God don't know us, then by all means, Corona have the right to invade us. And those of us who are in sin, God will let things happen to us. It doesn't mean that we're going to hell, but God will let Corona get us. I say that. It says in verse 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that they were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Listen, and knew not until the flood came and took them away. It was like a, a, a thief in the night. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man. It says, then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Listen to what I just said. Noah was in the boat. He was left and the rest was taken. There was Lot and his family. Lot and his family was left. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Please go read and study your Bible. Even today with the coronavirus, some has been left, some has been taken. It's not the end. So the prophecy is fulfilling itself before our eyes. So there are some people at work. You're going to go back to work when, the, when this is over with. They was taken, you was left. There's parents whose children is taken, but the parents is left. Or there's children whose parents is left, is taken and they are left. Can you see what the Bible is saying? Because what he's doing, he's letting us see I'm coming back, but it's not the end. Now, if he left some people, that means it's not the end of the world. It just means that it come to an end that I'm going to judge the generation. So every generation is going to always be judged by God. You can always go back to Genesis chapter chapter six and see. God have always judged sin all the way to the garden. There's one other piece I want to share for your study. Now, this is like a Bible study that I want you to go read and study because, again, I'm not trying to make you believe what I say. I want you to go study, pick up your Bible, feel a personal relationship. If you in sin, repent. If you repent, he will heal our land. He will heal our diseases. He will heal that situation. You have to repent. Corona, go away. The next piece is in Exodus. Exodus in chapter 10. We're going to use Pharaoh because Pharaoh dealt with the plagues that God sent to his country. Exodus chapter 10. Everybody come go with me. Pick up your Bible. Don't believe me. I want you to study. Go find out where plagues come from. They come from God. God can use the devil, but they come from God. It's a judgment. Plagues is infectious disease. And when we say pandemic, we mean it covers large, wide, every nation, country, people without discrimination. Now, notice God is sending Moses, his servant down there to say, let my people go. Again, don't pray for the coronavirus. Repent. Now, I say put repentance first because notice what Pharaoh is about to experience. It says, and Moses stretched forth his rod over the land of Egypt. And the Lord brought an east wind up on the land all that day, a east wind all that day and all that night. 24 hours of an east wind, and when it was morning, 
The east wind brought the locusts. Now there's a watch going on because the east wind came in all that day, all that night, and it brought a visitor called locusts. Even as we're speaking at this time over in Kenya, in Ethiopia, the worst infestation in decades is going on in that country. Uganda, Tanzania, it started February the 14th, 2020. Locust is already there in Kenya. Go read, go study, and see it for yourself. So now this locust is coming in on an east wind. And the locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coast of Egypt, very grievous. Remember, and he says, if you repent, he said, where is your revenge? Where is the punishment? Church, you shouldn't be found in the punishment. You shouldn't be. We shouldn't be found if we repent. But if we do not repent, we too will be found in the punishment. How can God judge the world and let the church get away? He will not. Because judgment starts with us. He says, so, verse 14. The locusts went up over all the land of Egypt and rested in all the coasts of Egypt. Very grievous were they before they were no such locusts. I'm saying it again. Before them, there were no such locusts. Not this type of locust as they. This is a different type of locust. It's never been a locust like these locusts. Neither out of them shall be such. For they covered the face of the whole earth so that the land was darkened, and they, and they did eat every herb of the land, all the fruit of the trees, with the hell had left. And there remained not any green thing in the tree, or any herb of the field, through all the land of Egypt. Note verse 16. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste. Now, what's going to happen? Repentance. That's why I say do not pray to God about the coronavirus. Repent. Pharaoh is about to repent. He says, Aaron and Moses, come with haste. Hurry. Come here. The locust has gotten his attention. So he says in verse 17, verse 16, he says, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. When we tell God, I have sinned, I've done wrong. When you and I begin to acknowledge our sin, and when we are broken and we are godly sorry about our sin, he wants the locusts to stop, let's acknowledge the sin. Let's acknowledge your criminal activity. Let us acknowledge our criminal activity, activity Brother Curl. Brother Curl, you're not exempt. God deals with us all. And I refuse to push myself out of this equation because we are all in this together. So I take seriously what I say to you because we are yet working out our soul salvation. So notice Pharaoh. Pharaoh won't apologize. Pharaoh say, look, I want to acknowledge I have sinned. I walk contrary against God and against you. Now, therefore, forgive, I pray thee, my sins only this once and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. These locusts are very vicious locusts. They create a type of death in his land, starvation in his land. So he run, he tell Aaron and Moses, hurry, make haste. I want to acknowledge my sin. Said again, verse 17. Now, therefore, forgive. That's what he said. Forgive. What you're going to start saying? Forgive me. If you're an adulterer, say forgive me. If you're a liar, say forgive me. If you're a thief, say forgive me. If you're a pedophile, say forgive me. If you're a whoremonger, I don't care what we are, say forgive me. And God is ready to forgive if we repent with godly sorrow. He said, if we confess our sin, He's just and faithful to forgive us and clean us up. We don't go on sinning like it's okay. No, we don't. We don't do it. Pharaoh have sense enough to know that I've offended God. Then he says, 
and he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. He went out from Pharaoh and prayed and interceded and took that petition that Pharaoh God is saying he's sorry. Pharaoh wants to say to you, I've sinned. America, church, when we tell God, our creator, God, our father, we have sinned, we will find that God will heal our land. God will deliver us. God will have mercy. Things will change. The impact is everywhere in our time of 2020. So he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. Notice this. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind. A east wind brought it, a west wind going to take it. A east wind brought it, a west wind going to take it, which took away the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. When God Almighty began to rule and reign on our behalf, when God arrives, when God stand up and God begins to move, God will cause the miraculous to take place. If we humble ourselves and pray, this man humbled himself and he prayed. He said, hurry up and go and tell God, I'm sorry for what I did. And when he did that thing, God sent a west wind. And God let the west wind take the locusts out to the Red Sea. And the show was over. So God bless you tonight. And God keep you as my prayer. And I pray tonight that you not believe what I say. Pick up your Bibles, people. Stop being church dumb. It's not a put down. It's to let you know, didn't understand my Bible. Or didn't use my Bible. It's time for you to pick up that Bible and start reading for yourself. Jesus says, take my yoke and learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. So please come. Now, for those tonight who want to give your heart to God, who want to know God more than just God, you want to know him as your father, I invite you now to present yourself to him on your knees and on your face and cry out to him. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Psalm 51, I don't care what you've done. Say, Lord, have mercy on me and confess your sins. He will forgive you and he will accept you if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. Believe in the God that you can't see. Believe in the God that you can't see. Yes, believe in the Jesus you can't see. You're sure. For those who need to hear me say you're sure, that's Jesus. Those who want to have a change of life, change of heart, change of direction, all you have to do is repent. Not just confess, but repent. This man repented and God brought a west wind and came in and sent the locusts away. So that's why we said, Corona, don't pray for Corona. Pray for yourself. God, help me. Father, forgive me. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Repent, it will bring change. Find a local church, find a pastor, find somebody who's going to care for your soul and tell you the truth. May God bless you again, and may he keep you. Always my prayer. My name is Richard Curl, Lord of God Ministry Provision Church, 4000 West Fairfield Drive, Pensacola, Florida. May God bless us and keep us in this time. Good night.